Hello and welcome to another Factorio tutorial. I'm Exterminator and thank you for joining me here again. So this tutorial is going to be a little different than the other ones I've done. Uh, the other tutorials I've done, I've kind of covered uh, just, you know, like a singular topic or two and, uh, and gone kind of more in depth about it. This one's going to be kind of a, a quick tips type of type of deal. It'll hopefully be a bit shorter than the other videos and there's just uh, a few things here that I want to cover that you know you may not know if you're newer to the game that could make things a lot easier for you and kind of just help streamline things and uh, and and make it all go better. So again, I do want to point out that these tutorials are uh, primarily meant for uh, newer players to the game. Anyone who you know is intermediate to advanced will probably know all this or at least most of it. Uh, you might learn one or two things, but uh, you know, again, this is mostly for beginners. So we'll start off here. That uh, the first one here that you can do is, if you did not know, you can copy and paste recipes from assembling machines to other assembling machines. Okay, so we have this guy here set to red science. Now, uh, if you didn't know about this feature, you would probably up until this point be going through and manually setting each one, right? Which can be a little bit of a pain, uh, especially you know if you have to like look through these menus and figure it out. I can copy this and paste it to any other assembling machine I want. So you copy it by shift right clicking and you see it now has a green box that means it's copied and then if I shift left click it pastes it and you'll see there it shows the green box is what I've copied and the orange or uh, yellowish box here is what I'm pasting to. So you can see I'm just shift. I'm just holding shift and left clicking each one, and it is uh, it's pasting it right. And uh, you know you can paste over ones that are already set. If I go here and I shift left click to paste, it'll do that. Uh, and I can just shift right click, shift left click, paste again. So this can be really really useful if you're setting up uh, like a, ch a chain of assembling machines that are all producing the same thing. Instead of manually going in and setting each one, uh, you can just copy and paste right. Now that same copy and paste feature can be used uh, for several other things. Uh, the, the, the other main one here that I think is really important to know is that for a requester chest, right, if you have a logistics network, which I've just put a robo port here, there's no robots in it for this test, but if you have a logistics network and you put the uh, requester chest in, you know, you would normally have to go in here and choose whatever. So circuits, I would need cable, I would need iron plate. Um, if you didn't know the copy paste, you could just, you would have to go in here and manually select it. But in 0.12 of Factorio, they added the ability to uh, pretty much copy paste the ingredient requirements uh, from a recipe in an assembling machine to the requester chest. So if I copy this and paste it to this chest, what it will do is it will, um, let me clear this, it seems to, there we go. Um, if, if I copy this and paste it to the chest, it will copy in the ingredients here, uh, two times what it needs here. So it'll put six copper cable and two iron plate is the request, as you can see. So this is super useful instead of going in and manually setting each one, especially if it's something that requires, you know, four or five, uh, ingredients, then, uh, then this can be super useful. It'll just pretty much request two times the amount of ingredients that are required. Now you can also copy between requester chests themselves. So if I copy the requester chest and paste it to this one, it'll paste the uh, requests here. And then you can also uh, copy paste between inserters, smart inserters. Uh, normal inserters obviously don't have any conditions to set. The smart inserters, I've set a filter here and I've set a logistics network condition of uh, that it can work if there's less than 100 circuits in the network, right? Now, for this situation, I would normally not need a filter uh, because because all that's being produced here is is green circuits, so it doesn't need to be told only to grab those. But I've done this just to demonstrate that it will also copy the filter. So same method, shift right click, shift left click to copy, and it copies both the filter and the network condition. This is also super helpful if you're just setting up like a big... Uh, a big like assembly thing here 
and you need all these smart inserters uh, set, you can just copy and paste ones that are going to be similar. Uh, you, you could even copy paste ones that aren't similar, right? And uh, and just change the actual item itself, right? So if I was doing transport belts, I could still copy the uh, circuit one here and then just change the item itself, uh, which would still be faster than manually going in and setting the number for each one. So that is quite useful. Okay, the next one is the fact that you can set filters in your hotbar uh, for specific items. Now, this, this does not apply to your main inventory. This is for your hotbar. Uh, you can't do it in your main inventory. Um, you, can, you, can you can see it says that right here. Anyway, so on your hotbar here, you can set a filter for a specific item. And this can help keep your hotbar a lot more organized. You do this by middle mouse clicking. So your mouse scroll wheel, you, you click it on the uh, slot and you are brought up to these menus where you can choose whatever, uh, you know, I'm just going to choose transport belts. And you can see it changed there with a little blue background transport belt. So now nothing except normal transport belts can go here. You'll see it's telling me here um, that nothing else can go in there. And the other nice thing about this is that if you have like transport belts in your inventory that you want down in your hotbar, if you just shift left click, it'll automatically put them in the filtered slot. Uh, normally it would just maybe put them in whatever slots open. And this holds true as well. If you go to play something and you hit Q, it clears what's in your hand and puts it back into your hotbar inventory. If you have a filter set, it'll automatically put it back in the filter. So if you get in the habit of doing this, it can uh, it can make things a bit quicker for you and just keep things much more organized. And if you do the same thing, middle mouse click on a slot that already has an item, it'll automatically filter it to whatever item was in there. So you can see there was a steam engine, it's now filtered to a steam engine. To clear a filter, you need to control middle click and it will clear it. You can see it, it uh, cleared it. I accidentally zoomed in a little bit with the scroll wheel, but um, yeah, there you go. So control middle click to clear it. You can also do the same thing here with cargo wagons. Uh, you can set filters and this can be really useful if you're using a train to transport more than one material back and forth. So like say oil barrels, uh, say I want half the wagon to be full or to have full oil barrels in it. And then the other half to have empty ones. I can filter it so that they only go into certain slots and only take up half of it. Otherwise, it could get like full of just one type and there'd be no room for the others. So this can be really useful to set filters. You can, I mean, obviously, you know, if you were transporting iron ore and copper ore, the same thing would apply. And uh, again, to clear it, control middle click just gets rid of the filter. Okay, uh, those are the, the main important ones. Just a couple others here. Uh, as I... It kind of played around with it a little bit here, but you can have power poles auto place at their maximum length while still connecting. Because, uh, like normally, right, if you just try to do it manually, it's kind of a pain because you have to like walk and then stop and like try to get it to uh, place as far as it can while still connecting, unless you're like ridiculously accurate with your ability to click on time. Uh, but you can have it do it automatically if you just hold left mouse button and run. So if I start here, I'm holding left mouse button, it'll automatically place them at their max distance that they'll connect. Um, regardless of what direction you go, it's really nice. They just change, you know, whatever, it'll do it. So there you go. So that's really quite useful. Uh, the next one here is with blueprints. So when you would make a, you would make a blueprint, right? And if you wanted to build over a place where there's forests normally if you go to click right i'm clicking to place it it won't let you because there's trees here another feature that was added i believe in 0.12 of factorio is you can shift click and what it will do is it will tell the construction robots to actually come clear the trees um, before they place the stuff that would go there so if i shift click you can see it puts a blueprint down and it tells it that all these trees here need to be cleared. So they'll come clear these and then place the thing down. So this is super helpful, you know, instead of having to manually go in and clear the forest first and then put the blueprint down, 
you can still do it this way and they'll just automatically clear the trees as they're building the blueprint so that it all works out. Uh, very, very helpful. Uh, I believe it would do the same thing with buildings. Actually, with bu buildings, it does not. Buildings uh, work a little different. You can see it just uh, leaves out whatever space is occupied. So that's definitely something to note. Uh, last thing here, which is kind of just like a little uh, funny, quirky thing you can do, is you can actually, for your steam engine setup, right, you can actually use other liquids besides water in your boilers here. So normally you would use water, right, obviously to be heated into steam, so on and so forth. You can use other things like uh, you can use petroleum, you can use light oil, heavy oil. I'm not sure if you can use like sulfuric acid, uh, possibly. I haven't tested it, but I'm just going to use these as an example. Uh, so if I go here, if I get rid of the pump, because otherwise it's going to mix the liquids, and I go ahead and take some sulfuric acid and connect this up it will actually run it let me uh, clear that it'll actually run the steam engines on on the uh, sulfuric acid which is pretty good I guess I mean I don't know when you would really want to like use it on this because it does consume it to a degree granted you could pump it you could have do what I did here essentially and run it back to the tank it's coming from but it still consumes it a bit so as you can see here these are now full and it's working and it, it will run on this now now the problem we have here is that it's not actually being pumped so it's not getting its full liquid requirement and it's not running at full efficiency uh, we could throw a pump in here if we wanted a small pump and it would somewhat fix the issue as you can see but you can look how quickly it's using this um, I mean it will use it up and it makes it's slowing down now but if you consider that's still pretty quick considering uh, you know considering how quickly it can make so so this will run uh, fairly decently maybe not completely full performance on uh, on, on other stuff, right? I, I could do heavy oil. I'm not going to because it, it does the same thing. But you can do that, which I suppose could be handy. Uh, one quick note, though, is, is you cannot use it for actual fuel. You would have to turn it in to solid fuel to be able to do that. So you can't actually, like, like burn it as fuel. It just acts as the liquid running through here. And I think that is about it, guys. So uh, just a few quick things you may or may not have known that can be extremely helpful and kind of just help you streamline things and make it all go quicker. Uh, I guess one other thing, which I believe most people would know, but if you don't, you can see I have these little icons over the assembling machines and the storage tanks. Uh, this is having advanced information on. You can toggle this on and off with Alt uh, by default. That That's the default key. It toggles that off and on. Now, Something to note here is if I mouse over and insert it, you can see it actually has a little arrow where it outputs and then a bar where it grabs from. And obviously our power went out. But even if you hit Alt, Alt and you don't have this displaying automatically, which I don't, there's actually an option here in graphics specifically for that. So if you hit Alt and you don't have the arrows and stuff on the inserters and such displaying automatically without mousing over them, it's quite possible you have this option turned off. So if I turn it on, um, they'll be con displayed constantly. And obviously you can do vice versa. If you don't want the arrows on, but want the advanced info stuff, you can just uncheck that option. So there you go. If you didn't know that, you can turn that on. It's, uh, it's really good for like when you take screenshots, so you actually know what you're looking at and uh, running through your factory as well. But I believe that's it, guys. I hope you found at least some of this helpful. And, uh, you know, let me know in the comments if you have any other thoughts, suggestions for next tutorial and uh, anything else. I would love to hear your feedback. But as always, thank you so much for watching. Again, hope you found it helpful. And until next time, I look forward to seeing you all and take care, guys.